the Multicultural Advisory Committee for the campaign federally from Ottawa. His riding is Calgary East, and he's been here all week visiting riding by riding. We're very pleased to see him here to address us today. Not only that, but we also have Subair, who's here as well. And uh, where's uh, Eric? Eric is here too. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, and we're all part of the same team uh, in the GTA area. So, EPAC, I know you have a lot to say, so please go ahead. We we'll welcome you. I have a lot of to say. You better <laughs> believe what I do. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hope. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's. Uh, First, let me start by saying, which I say at every place I go, is that I am not responsible for the cold weather. Everybody <laughs> thinks that I'm from Alberta and I brought this cold weather with me. You know, I did not. You know, bring it. But I am very happy to be here, uh, as Mr. Hope said. The Conservative Party is the Multicultural Advisory Committee, of which I lead the chair. This committee is, is where your voices, our voices are channeled through into the Conservative Party and that becomes into the national campaign. However, that being said, that's just one portion of it. But the most, most important portion is, is the candidates that are running for us. Joe here. not, believe me, it is not an easy job to run for, for a political office. It's a very, very high stress job. For you to take the first step is thank you very much for taking that first step because we do need the voices, voices from every community, from every diversity into the decision making process of Canada. Canada, we all say, is a multicultural country. It sure is. But it also needs to have all kind of people from all backgrounds into decision-making process. And Joe, by having taken the first step in running for the Conservative Party, has decided to be in that decision-making process, which is governing the country. We are looking forward to have Joe join our caucus. In, in Ottawa, and with your support, with your support, it is possible, it is quite possible for Joe to come to Ottawa. But he needs your help, your help, he needs your help to get the message out, the message of conservatism out. So let me start by saying that in election 2005, the, and 2006 is the Liberal Party has lost its moral authority to govern completely. Remember, it was the three collective parties that brought the Liberal government down, not one party. The reason being, you know, Liberals have been power since 1993. And if you look at the record, of the Liberal Party today. If you look at the record of what they have done, you know, then anybody looking at that would know it's time for change. And let me for a short period of time remind you what the li Liberal record was. Look at the record at immigration. 1993, they said we were going to raise it to 1%. Today is 2005. It is still 220,000. Nothing has changed. But now it's election time. And during election time, the Liberals are great in giving promises. So today, now they're saying they're going to raise the level again high. Well, excuse me, you said that in 1993. What happened? In May of 1998, I got up in the House of Commons and asked the Minister of Immigration, what were you going to do about foreign credentials? She said, oh yes, we have to work very hard. We will be working very hard 
to solve this problem of foreign credentials. 2005, nothing happens. And now, it's election time. So, they are now saying, oh, we've got to do something about it. We'll do something about it. So now they want to take credit. Why selection time? They came along and said, family reunification is a very important part of, multi of immigration policy. Great. Nobody denies that. And they keep telling you that all the time. Did you know that in year 2001, they reduced the parental applications from 19,000 to 9,000 without telling anybody. You know what was the result? Ask your friends who have sponsored their mothers or their, their parents or their grandparents. Ask them. And you will find out from them that today, from two years, it takes six years, and they don't know when it will be finished. Why? And today, again, it's election time. So now they are saying, oh yeah, we will do it faster process. So now they raise it up back to America. Because it's election time. Again, the same old promise. Let's for a minute talk about, in this whole year, or they have been in power. The liberal mentality is we are the natural governing party. We are entitled to them. The multicultural community must vote for us because we brought them into this country. So they expect you should be grateful to them. What for? You came here on your own. Remember that. You worked hard over there. Not according to Paul. All right. Not according to Paul. And not also that. This cultural entitlement could be seen when Mr. Dingwall came in front of the committee. A liberal who said it is his entitlement. His entitlement after he resigned to get taxpayers' money. Excuse me, if you resign, nobody gets this thing. Why him? He said it is his entitlement. This is the mentality of the liberal government, which resulted in the sponsorship scandal of them taking your tax dollars to benefit themselves. Now, i got to ask a very simple question. Why is it when a minister stands up in the house and says, I am going to return back $700,000 to the tax? Why? Obviously, he stole the money. They stole the money. That is why they are admitting it in the House of Commons. I am returning the money back. If they hadn't stolen this money, then why? Now, I want to remind you that it was not the liberal government that came and said, we stole your money. It was the Auditor General who caught them stealing the money. So the Auditor General who caught them. And now they went in damage control. And now, lo and behold, the Prime Minister of Canada, who happened to be the Finance Minister at that time, said he knew nothing about it. So what was he a Finance Minister for? He was the man in charge of your money. What for? So where did the money go? He says, I don't know. If he did not know, then obviously he was a hopeless prime, uh, a finance minister. Isn't it? You know, do you want a finance minister over there or a prime minister who says he doesn't know what is going on? And now the liberals say, oh, we have a prime minister who knows everything. So this culture of entitlement, this corruption that is there is the reason why we feel they have lost the moral authority. Let me for a minute go back. Most of you, and I know the Chinese community is a great business community. Um, I've been in that parliament for nine years now. And every time, as I said, I see Paul Martin when he was the finance minister raising his hands up. He loves raising his hand. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got deficit control. We have a surplus. Surplus. And I said, first year I said, great surplus. Second year, great surplus. Third year, great surplus. My fourth year I said, hello, something is wrong here. How come we keep having these surpluses, yet 
we don't see any reduction in government expenditure. <laughs> and yet you have a surplus, but no reduction in government expenditure. It's like everything else, right? right? Believe. So, what would you say? Well, Only one. You have been heavily taxed. That is your money. You know, that's why we have these surpluses. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It came from you guys, from taxes. We are the highest taxed people in the G7 country. Of course, that's why we have these surpluses. You know. So what does the Conservative Party offer you? What does Joe offer to you? We have said we will first clean this whole nonsense out. So that never again will a government be able to steal taxpayers' money. And we will do that through Accountability Act. You know, we have institutions, and I just mentioned to you in this speech that it was the Auditor General that caught the Liberal Party's team. So we have institutions that are there that are supposed to work and control government when it goes off time. But you know what has happened? They appoint their friends in this position. And when they appoint their friends in this position, what do you think the friend is going to do? You know, take an example. Take an example of the Ethics Commissioner. When he was investigating Judy Scrow, the Minister of Immigration. Do you know he gave the report to her to read first? So she could make corrections. And this is the so-called Ethics Commission. Because he was an appointee of the Prime Minister. So the first thing we're going to do is, is make sure we have, we give these institutions the power so that they can keep control over the government. Only they can keep control. So that is the Accountability Act. Now, as I told you right now about surpluses, right, we have used the same model that the Finance Department does in projecting the budget, and we did the same model. And that is why we came along and said, yes, this is it's too much. That's why we came along and said 2% GST reduction. Money back to you. Money that is yours, that we took, the Liberal government took away. We are not giving anything new. We are returning back your money. Remember, they have surpluses. We are giving you back money for you to raise your children, for families. You know, for the heavy burden on raising families. That is why we are giving you money back. Again, I want to remind you, it's your own money that you're getting back. You know, we are giving money back to the small businesses, reducing the tax burden on them, so they can go ahead and work you know, and enjoy their fruits of hard labor. I was a small business, and I'll tell you, I don't know if many of you who are small businesses here, I was a small business for seven years before I went into politics. And what I found was that while everything else was straight, you know, salaries were not going high, and only one item went, kept going higher, higher, higher. Anything to do with the government. Any bloody survey that had to do with the government, it just kept going higher and higher and higher. Look at the graph. It goes higher and higher and higher. You know. you see? We believe a dollar in your pocket is wisely spent than a dollar in government's pocket. We had the spectacle of Mr. Martin coming to Toronto and say, crime now is growing. I don't know where the hell he was sleeping all this time. <laughs> if he looked around, crime wasn't growing, it was there. Right. But suddenly this high profile thing happened in Toronto. Do you know, gang violence is as big in Toronto as it is in Calgary, as it is in Vancouver. But that didn't bother him. At the time when we said, do something. No, no. So he comes up with this great idea, Band-Aid, going to ban handguns. <laughs> Forgot. They were already banned. <laughs> Forgot to check with somebody. <laughs> the fact is, it is not the handgun that is the issue. We have a gun registry control. The problem is 
our sentencing. We have this problem where people who commit crime go in front of the courts and they are let go. Suspended sentences. Now, I have a, I shouldn't say this, but Mr. Swan Robinson is a friend of mine. I know him in Parliament for a long time. The gentleman stole $50,000 ring, man. You try to steal $50,000 ring, see what happens to you. This guy will let go of a suspended sentence. No, he's running. And he is not, does not even have a criminal record. You try to do that, you tell me what will happen to you. you know. So you see, we are saying, we have been saying, we need sentences. We need to tell these criminals that there is consequences for what you do. You know, I introduced a private member's bill for break and enter for minimum of two years sentence. Why? Because it is the repeat offenders that keep doing this. Because it is a profitable business. Do it, the judge will let you go. So now suddenly Mr. Martin says it, it is time to look at it. You know why? Election time. It's always during election time these things happen. So ladies and gentlemen, many questions have been asked about Mr. Harper. And I want to say this to you. We do not have an American presidential type of government where you elect a president and he makes. We have a party system. It is the teamwork that does the work. It's your caucus that does the work. That makes the decision a democratic process. The Conservative Party is the only caucus in the Parliament of Canada that is standing solid behind Mr. Harper. Do you know why? It is because he is providing solid leadership. He is providing solid leadership. And just now, when we came from another office, one of the former MPs phoned his friend who happened to be Mr. Harper's boss. And he said, who happened to be when Mr. Harper used to work. Remember? And you know what he said? He said, his former boss said, only thing I can tell you, Mr. Harper, he will do what he says. And if you looked at yesterday's debate, one of the questions was, are you politicians going to do what you say? What you say? Right? Yeah. Absolutely. That was the question. Yeah. Why? Because Canadians are tired of political <coughs> promises. The 12 years of liberal, four elections, promises, promises, promises. Broken, broken, broken. So now they are asking. So this is what the Kandar, we are not making any big promises. We are not making any major promises. We are saying this is from our projection, like the 2% GST reduction, giving you the tax break is out of the model that the revenue that is coming now, so-called surpluses, making tough on crime. That's nothing new. So what we are offering is a team, a government that is accountable, a clean government that will listen to you, will not say two things, but will stick to what is necessary and important for Canada. And for that, we need Mr. Jolie. <laughs> We need a team. And Joe, I don't have to come here. I'm from Calgary, you know. <laughs> I hope you got elected. So I can stay back in my own riding. But, you know, it's great to have you here. And Joe will provide that, that necessary input into the Conservative caucus that we need, you know, and to make decisions. But Joe needs your help, ladies and gentlemen. Joe can't do it alone. 
Joe is one guy. He needs to get out there and do it. But all of you have to assist him. Have to get that conservative message out to the doorsteps. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Whatever way you can, because Joe, we're looking for you. Thank you very, very much. Oh, yes, the response has been phenomenal. Remember, our message is very simple. I just heard, this is the liberal record, broken promises. You gotta remind the people these broken promises, because the liberals are giving the same promises again. They're recycling the same promises again. Right? It's a recycling of the same promises again. And so we gotta remind them, but at the same time, we also gotta say what we gonna do. Yes, I, we just don't wanna say, oh yeah, yeah this, the liberals are gonna do this, and then when we go into government, we have no idea what we're gonna do. No, that's not what we're gonna do. We know what we are going to do. We know we have laid down our, our game plan. We know what, and we are telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no hidden agenda with the Conservative Party. Don't listen to the, to the Liberals to say there is some kind. Nothing. We are as open as we can. To be. The reason why we are now coming slowly with our pronouncements of policies is simply because in the past we have noted the Liberals steal our, pro our programs. You know, we come up with ideas and they steal when we play it. Now we, are, we, we know the game. So we are doing it nice and easy, you know. And now you can see the confusion on their part. When we came out with GST, they were lost. Suddenly Mr. Martin is running and saying, I am going to give you tax break. It is better. Well, if it was better, then why didn't you do it before? You've been there for 13 years. Why is it now suddenly important? Election time, because he's, because he's going to lose. That's why he wants to give you this, this whole thing. So, um, I just want to dwell, because I see you have a... a, a no. Chinese Take your time. community. Take no, no. <laughs> you have a Chinese community over here, and the issue of head tax is quite important Absolutely. for the Chinese yeah. community out here. Let me tell you uh, a little, uh, a short brief now. Inki Mark, who happens to be my colleague, brought in this private member's <laughs> bill. You see. However, by the time it finished going through the whole process, it had lost its meaning. The usual liberal, liberal attention, this thing, giving it left to the liberals, you know, they twisted and turned it, and by the time they finished it, it's almost become, uh, you know, of, of a most divisive issue in the community. You know. The Conservative Party first recognizes the fact that this was a discriminatory tax, and for that we will apologize. So the Conservative Party is going to apologize. Insofar as it is concerned about the compensation aspect of it, we need to talk back with the Chinese community and get a consensus back again, you know. Not the liberal way of pushing it, you know. So the leader has said we will go back to the Chinese community and listen to what the Chinese community and work together. Now many people have said that it'll take too long. Well, no, I don't think so it'll take too long because now it has become an issue at forefront and there is a desire on the part of the Chinese community to come to a resolution. And I'm sure we'll come to a resolution, but it must satisfy the Chinese community. You know, it must not divide them as the liberal one is that. That is what the conservatives will do. All right? Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I am going to, uh, first of all, I want to thank Deepak to come all the way from Calgary to help me. My you pleasure. Know, yeah, and also it's a pleasure to have you here making a wonderful So you win, so I don't come back. <laughs> Before I start, I want to thank a couple of key people here. My campaign manager, Dave Zee, just stand here. Been planning this event for the, and also my writing president Ted Higgin. <laughs> and the entire board of directors of Markham Union Mill that is here today, and also the various associations that come here to support me today. 
let me state it very clearly. People ask me, why are you running the third time? Okay. They are reminding me about Mr. McCollum, which I do agree is a formidable opponent. Okay. But as Deepak had pointed out, after 12 years of liberal government, people desire for a change. People desire for a new blood for this riding of Markham Unionville. I also want to tell people why I picked the Conservative Party, because when I run across the constituent, knock on door, too often I run across my own community will ask me the question, why conservative, not liberal? So I want you, you have a let me have a chance to tell you the reason. I came here you know, in 1984. I explore the opportunity with different parties. To my understanding, there's only two parties can be in government, the liberal and the conservative. So, in deep study, I discover that most Chinese are aware they think that liberal are the guardian angel, are guardian angel for immigrants, which is not true. The history that I dig up from the library, 1923 to 49, under the liberal prime minister of Mackenzie King, he banned a single Chinese to come to Canada. No Chinese were allowed to come to Canada for 29 years. Not only that, we are the only one that had to pay $500 head tax to come here. And I want to reflect what conservatives have done. Before I, before I say that, you probably notice a gentleman that driving a motorbike all the way from Vancouver to Ottawa to make a point that about the head tax issue. I am not one of the victims, so I don't know much. So I also doing my study. But the thing amazed me is that when I saw the CBC, right, he said he was being promised during the Second World War to fight in Singapore for the Canadian government. And he was promised when he come back alive, he will be given Canadian passport and Canadian citizen. But obviously, the Liberal government never expect him to come back alive because they told him before he departed that when the Japanese catch you, make sure you take your pill and don't tell them we sent you. Okay? But that poor man was very fortunate to come back to Canada. So he went and applied for Canadian passport and to his surprise, the Liberal government said, well, wait a minute. Yeah, we made promise, but not so quick. So he had to fight for another four years until 1949 to get his citizenship. Reflecting backward now, I came in 1984 under the Brian Mulroney government. I don't have any friend, any relative that sponsored me. I came because of my merit. Okay? I'm able to bring my parent, able to bring my brother. But, you know, we all, not only we in, increase the quota from 89,000 to 250,000 immigrants to come to this country. Remember, in those days, between 84 to 93, if you sponsor your parent, you are allowed to bring your brother and sister 18 plus. But today, when the liberal come into government in 93, they separate them. You know, you say 18 years old, they are adults. They have to apply on their own merit. Imagine it, you have children just finished high school, 18 years old, not enough education, not enough work experience. <clears throat> How are they going to qualify to come to Canada? So the parent will come, then the children will be stuck and remain in their own country. And you know, we want to change that. When we're going to form government on January 23rd, we're going to tell them we welcome family unification. Not like the liberal. Only will come during the election say, oh, your family are welcome now. For the last five years, if you have children, you try to bring your parent over to look after your kid, you'll be disappointed because what happened? You know, the kid was just born. You waited and waited until five years, six years, the kid now in the school. And yet, you're still waiting for your parent to come over. And again, as Deepak has pointed out, only in election time, the devil will come back and say, okay, we're going to speed up. No, only we're going to speed up. We're going to allow your parent to come in here. And wait here, we'll, finally, we'll give you the per permission. So this is all bogus credential to claim that they're protecting the immigrant. That's not true, okay? You know, I am one of the unique examples. And 
The other reason, this party have given me three opportunity to run for the party because it's a democratic country, you know, but I'm like a liberal. You probably heard last year a Chinese in Vancouver was crying. I want to run for the liberal party. But Mr. Kretchen or Paul Martin told him that too bad. You know, I have a boy by the name of Cunningham is going to run. So, you know, it really doesn't matter you sign two years membership. You're out of luck. But here, if I can sign enough member, bring them out to vote for me, secure the majority, I'm a candidate. Okay, it's very democratic. You know, Stephen Harper cannot step in and say, hey, I want to appoint somebody to run in Markham Union. He can because it's a democratic party. And you know, I'm honored and humble. I was giving the third time, I mean, second chance in Markham to run for this party. Here is, today we have a unique platform. Last year, yeah, the liberals were able to fear mongering by claiming that we have an agenda. Obviously, our party was just merged. We don't have a platform, but today we have wonderful platform after the convention. Now, we have a lot of announcements kept lately here. One example, Deepak already mentioned GST. The average house in Markham is minimum $300,000 to start with, okay? 2% GST translates to $6,000 saving. $6,000, imagine, is saving. An average Canadian in this riding spend about $50,000 on food and clothing, and if you take 2% off, that's another $1,000 we are talking about. Now, the liberal want to institute the daycare. Let me tell you, I spent 12 years living in Sweden. That country have tried, have failed, and they tell us, you know, we used to have about nine month maternity benefit leave in Sweden. They increased to 18 months because they say, hey, we, it's too expensive, we can't do it anymore. We will allow you, the parent, to stay home if you choose to look after your, your, your own children. That's exactly what Stephen Harper is saying. We're going to keep you $1,200 each child. If you, I mean, we're not saying that you don't put your, uh, your own children at a daycare. It's, it's your choice. But we'll give you the money to decide. Okay? Government believe that the parent can pick the best choice. You know, if you want to have your children to be looked after by your own parent, so be it. But we want to give you the opportunity to do that. But unlike the liberal, any time you don't follow the rule, you're punished. This, I'm giving you another example. If you're two couple, one working, and the wife stay home to look after the kid, and you're going to be taxed to death. The only way you will save taxes is that you have to leave your children to the institution uh, child care facility to be able to claim the things. So when I was canvassing around the area, I am very touched. If you look today, I never have this kind of volunteer in the past. And it comes from all segments of the population. You have the mainstream here. You have our South Asian brother here. And we have, it's very amazed, we have an Afro-Canadian here. And we have a lot of Chinese and my campaign manager, Indian. So, you know, like this is a unique team. I'm very touched, you know, about the unique opportunity it was given to me. As Deepak has said over and over again, I can't do it alone, okay? I need your help, okay? I'm going to speak from my heart in emotion. In order for me to defeat my column, each and every one of you in this room here, before you leave, have the opportunity to talk to my campaign manager, sign up the volunteer form, tell him what you can do in my campaign. Because sometimes you win and lose by one vote. And you know, it's not easy to run for public office. And I am very grateful that my dear wife, Yvonne, given me another opportunity to run. And to that, I'm very grateful. And I hope each and every one of you do your best. Help me. Together, we will defeat McCollum. Together, 
you will elect a conservative member of parliament on, mon on Monday, January the 23rd. Together, we'll make sure that Markham Union will we become a blue territory again. Thank you for your help. Thank you for coming here. There is also a candidate just came from Scarborough Rouge River, you know, like a, he's an Indian background too. His name is Jerry, Jerry Payne, running for Scarborough Rouge River. Uh, if, if you have a friend in Scarborough Rouge River, you know, make sure, spread your messages. He's a good friend of mine, you know, he's a man of integrity, you know, let's help him and vote for him. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry Bans. I'm from Scarborough Rouge River. Against Derek Lee. Keep that in mind that he is not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> He's winning all those votes from Chinese people. You have never seen his picture on any billboard because he doesn't want to show his face. My message today is that let's throw the crook government out and bring some honest government in. Whatever Mr. Harper is saying is achievable. He doesn't say that we're going to take away the GST. They have said it, liberals have said it over and over again that they haven't done it. Mr. Harper started with, okay, 1% now, in five years, 2%. And it's, it is achievable. A lot of the people have embedded in their mind that liberals are for them. The immigrants. This country cannot do without immigration. This country thrives on immigration. Look at Mr. Deepak. He's been a senior member, and now Joe is going to be there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be there. My, my, my nomination started, I got the nomination on December the 1st. But I have always had the record coming from behind and winning it. I'm going to do it this time too, but I cannot do it without your support. Please get out and vote. A lot of people are saying Chinese people don't get out to vote. We need your support. Please be there on January the 23rd and send my friend Joe and myself. <laughs> come on, gather around. John, come on. Canadians deserve a political process with integrity and accountability. There can be no greater honor than to serve your community and your country. Joe Lee has demonstrated that he has the skills required to ensure your voice is heard in Parliament. I wish him all the best. John Tory, Leader, Ontario PC Party. I'm a member of parliament from Calgary East. I ran in 1997, first got elected in 97, then I ran again in 2000, and then I got re-elected in 2004. So this will be my fourth election from the riding of Calgary East in Alberta. We know that you have a post of 
Yes, I am the multicultural critic for the Conservative Party in this parliament, as well as a critic for international trade, emerging markets, which that takes me to China, Hong Kong, all these places, and they are the emerging market. So I, my portfolio is both multiculturalism and uh, emerging markets. In multiculturalism, my whole thing is to ensure that the voice of the multicultural community is heard into parliament and make policies for Canada that are multicultural friendly. So, say you are multicultural critics, do you find any like that policy or the Liberal government doesn't do anything for multicultural issues? Well, the Liberal, let's take the head tax issue for, you know, you see in the head tax issue, the community is divided. The Liberals could not come up with the solution to this and one would wonder why after they have all these things but most importantly we face discrimination in this country the last report i read from calgary that more than 50 percent of the chinese community felt they were still being discriminated against so these are the issues that we need to fight to ensure that everybody no matter where they are from are treated equally in this country we know that the no, they haven't. I asked the first time I got, as I said, I got elected in 97. So in 98, I asked this question. In 98, they promised that they would do something. Today is 2005, and they haven't done anything. Now it's election time, so they say they're going to do it. But their record of doing things is not there. The Conservative Party is saying that once we get into the Parliament, that is one of our top first priorities. According to one Liberal uh, MP, Dr. Trump, she said that she has tabled a bill of like that you or how does that happen? Well, let me say, I asked this question as I said 1998, and they didn't do it. Now, election time so they very quickly got Ruby Dalla just a one year and one and a half year term MP just come new kid on the block but the liberals needed to show it to the ethnic community because they were losing the support after all this time so they got her to do these things and of course now she wants to take credit but you know what the record has been poor on that job so how is like well Number one, I'm already a multicultural critic. Number two, we have a lot of ethnic candidates running for us in this riding, Joe Lee. So all of these people that will come into the Alberta, into the Conservative caucus, will form a powerful voice that will represent the whole communities that make up the multicultural mosaic of Canada. So you say you have been in Parliament for nine years. So what's your feeling of being MP? Is there lots of things to do? I have a, a great honor because I'm on the emerging market. This is a great honor that Michael Stewart bestowed on me to go and represent them in the Parliament of Canada. But being in myself a visible minority, communities, the Chinese community, Vietnamese, Filipinos, they all look upon me to address their issues that they do. And that has been a great source of strength for me. And I've traveled. I've traveled to China, I've traveled to Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan you know, all Malaysia, all these countries promoting trade with these countries. And to promote trade with these countries, the first foremost people are, let's say, doing trade with China, Chinese, doing trade with Taiwan, Chinese, doing trade with Hong Kong, Chinese. So it's a great, this thing, I've made great friendship with the Chinese communities as we promote trade with these countries. We all know that the Conservative Party and the Party is getting very strong in Western Canada. What do you see in the change in the Eastern Europe? Well, I'm right here. I'm here to give the Conservative message. As I'm talking to you people, I'm asking you, it's time for change. This government has been in power for too long. Look at their record. They have done nothing. You know, so I am asking you on January 23rd to your views, it's time for change. Vote for the Conservative government. Don't buy this propaganda that the Chinese, uh, that, excuse me, my apologies to that one, to the uh, Liberals doing that, which is that the, the Conservative party only represents the West. No, we represent all of you. Look, our, we are great candidates. So I'm asking you to vote Conservative on January 23rd. Time for change.
to you and your party. Thank you very much. And again, once more, and let me wish your viewers a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, the best for 2006. And I know that the Chinese New Year is coming. By the way, I would like to say, as a multicultural critic, for the first time in the history of Canada, we celebrated Chinese New Year. I was the sponsor on Parliament here this year. It was a great, 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 great event. A lot of Chinese came, but we for the first time celebrated on Parliament here. Because, remember, Chinese are part of Canadian. Chinese New Year is part of Canadian holiday now. So let me wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and a best, Happy New Chinese Year. Julia, 刚才你的 speech 谈到你的你你做竞选啊，呃 ，public office， 到底家庭的 support 有多大，多重要？呃，当然，有太多的支持的话，啊，呃，当这个是非常一个重点，对不对？呃，因为我每天出去竞选拉票的话，有太太在家里照顾小孩子的话，那么我放心一点，我可以做我的工作啊。呃，大太太那个支持来讲，是给我一个很大的鼓励。呃，我想问李太太，呃，周丽已经第三期竞选了，你作为一个在后面支持她的女，那个是太太，到底你的感觉怎么样？你的想法怎么样？希望她这次能够成功啊，就是这样。那、啊、是这这就是第三次，到底头一两次你你的想法怎么样？头一两次比较没有经验呐、啊，第三次就比较多一点经验，多一点，呃 ，volunteer 来帮忙。啊，我我这两个人说，大家知道，呃，周丽做 finance 非常成功，赚那么多钱，去竞选的价格也十万八万，<笑>时间花了，钱可能也也也没有那么多。这是他的梦想啊，所以就让他，他到这个梦想。那么你作作为自己走开了，作为呃，对，呃，所以我太太也是在问问我这个问题，为什么偏偏的要想着去参政？我说，因为个问题就是我们现在目前有六十万华人嘛，到目前为止还没有一个国会议员 ，OK， 说谁来代表代表我们华人讲讲话？说人头税就一个问题 ，OK， 你看没有国会没有人帮帮帮我们嘛，所以你看弄得一塌糊涂的，啊、呃，虽然。呃，接近参选是不容易 ，OK， 所以一定要跟太太好好的商量，得到她的支持才能够出来今天出来竞选。啊，也问你太太了，现在周丽还没有当选，已经那么忙了。如果她做了国会议员，就又到奥特华，就多伦多，你可能一个礼拜，可能一个月见不到她一两次。那那你是你想法怎么怎么样？这个也有想过啊，但是。他喜呃，他喜欢做这个政治家，政治家嘛，就让他去做好了。作为一个夫妻，我自也好、呃、在背后支持他。所以你无怨无悔，<笑>可以这么说。除了比如说在家照顾小孩，做我知道你自己有自己的事业，是，还要照顾照顾家庭，照顾小孩，现在还有自己一个非常有理想的的丈夫，到底这个压力啊，那个。比如说，会会不会很大了？那个是有点大。那么你去怎么去处理？不是很难。这是比较没有时间呐、啊嗯。现在比较没有时间在一起啊。嗯。每次都是好像要分开来自己做个人个人的工作。嗯、你你觉得一个一个一对夫妻，大家有有一定的 understanding， 就是说大家谅解，是不是会比经常？再出来，那就没有理想会好好一点，还是怎么样？我，他有他的理想啊，所以我就要他去做，是，就是在背后支持他、啊。那么周丽丽应该很幸运有这么好好的太太。啊，当然，呃、我刚刚讲的是，呃，没有他的支持的话，真的做起来也是不容易。OK， 呃。因为他有一个事业，整天也是忙得不得了。OK， 说、so, 他。You know, 我应该是体谅他 ，OK， 呃，但是既然我有这个思想为国家效力，呃，精忠报国，那么他听到了以后也感觉到很值得支持，所以就基本上两夫妻一条心，<笑>可以这么说。<笑>
，因为你真的，比如说到了奥特瓦去，刚才刚才说了，你的时间啊，会放在政治，放在跟跟工作服务多一点。那么对家庭。会不会有一点说怎么安排一下呢？还是嗯，呃，我我我幸运一点就是我妈妈住我隔壁 ，OK。呃，那如果有必要的话，但是还是会请妈妈帮帮忙 ，OK。因为我妈妈住我隔壁，我住六十五，但是住六十七号，啊，所以大家还可以照顾。OK， 那我小孩两个也是大了，一个二十三岁，一个是十七岁 ，OK。呃，那当然他们也可以照顾一下小的那个女儿十岁的 ，OK。呃，当然，这一个东西还没有想得那么远，呃 ，one step at a time， 来、啊、先先当先先 ，OK， 然后再呃好好的坐下来研究一下怎么处理家庭的问题。应该是没有问题的，因为现在他的工作也是很忙的，天天也是早上忙到晚上，就是不一样的工作嘛。对，就是从事务到公务上面去转了一个方向。你刚才说你有两个两个小孩，已经三个，三个。他们对你这次竞选有什么帮忙还是？有啊，那么出来有帮忙啊！我到了今天在工作 ，OK， 他今他每一次放假他就过来帮忙 ，OK。去，那么啊，你们做一个说比较 typical 的移民家庭啊，从印度啊、瑞典到这里，作为那个华人的，你们觉得就会不会是一个 model？ 希望其他中国人家庭也也向你们学习一下。呃，我我我这。这个竞选也是为了我们下一代的那个华人那个子弟，对不对？我希望经过这一次当选的话，希望能够吸引更多的年轻人出来竞选，像迪巴讲的一样。那么焦虑当选了，我就没有必要来，呃，我没有必要再来，呃，呃，没有必要再来 Toronto 了嘛。焦虑可以分担我这个责任了。啊，也我的思想也是一样，我当前的我能够吸引很多年轻人出来 ，OK， 那我也可以啊，感觉到一点轻松一点啊，我影响了整个华人对政治的那个呃印象。啊，李太太，既然你你丈夫有这么大的理想，那么你给我讲一句，怎么鼓励一下你的丈夫？<笑>就是祝他成功，可以代表我们华人。那么，如果朱莉你选到了，你怎么多谢你太太？<笑>这个，呃，没给选。<笑>我答应了他，国会放假的时候一定会回来，好好的陪他。<笑>带我去中国。呃<笑><笑>，好好的陪他。那个，那个，竞选的梦想就是说到中国旅行，那么。是。好，朱莉。祝你祝你，希望你成功，将来在澳大利亚见你。好、啊，谢谢，谢谢。谢谢